Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imona Project. We here at the Imona Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to inspiration, uh, guidance, advice, education. And um, I want to tell a story um, about uh, two brothers. Uh, it was uh, Rabbi Schmelke and um, Rabbi Pinchas. Uh, Rabbi Schmelke was the Rav of Nicholsburg, and Rabbi Pinchas was the Rav of Frankfurt on Main. And they went to see the Magad of Mesrich. They heard about this uh, great rabbi, this, this, this Torah scholar, this insightful m uh, sage. They had to see him. So they arrived. And it was Arab Shabbos. It was a Friday afternoon. And um, they get there, and they uh, they traveled a, a long way to get, to get to to see the Magad of Mesrich, and uh, he didn't uh, give them so much of a of a greeting. Um, he was preparing for a greater, more important guest, Shabbos. He's getting ready for the Sabbath. Okay, fine. Friday night dinner. They're expecting these uh, pearls of knowledge. Uh, these great insights from the Magad of Mesrich, this big reputation, not so much. Uh, he, he spoke a little, but not what they were expecting. They were plotzing, and they were in spilkas, they were on pins and needles, waiting for these Torah uh, jewels, and uh, no. The next day, I'm sure they have lunch, same thing. Um, he didn't give in a lot of deep Torah insights, no various layers and aspects, uh, no Kabbalistic interpretations. He just spoke like a, like a, a loving husband uh, and a nice father. The third meal shall assure this in between Menchemarev, the afternoon and evening prayers, that, that special meal on uh, Saturday afternoons. They figured, well, this has got to be the big, after, uh, the big opportunity. He's saving his uh, his uh, his drush, his dvartor, his his insights for his chassidim, and uh, we're going to really get it this time. No, um, the Magad of Mezrich uh, sat with his chassidim, and uh, again he acted uh, the way a father would with his children. Uh, very kind, very loving. Not all, not all that insightful. Not all that deep. And um, they were very disappointed. Uh, they had heard so much of the, the great Magad of Mezrich, and like, you know, they were disappointed. The next day, they go to the study hall to say goodbye to the Hasidim, because they were, they were taking off. They, they were you know, very disappointed. And they see in the study hall a man that they had never met before. Um, he was uh, obviously very poor. He was uh, dressed in uh, patched clothing and was kind of sickly, but he was a, had a friendly face, a very kind-hearted man. And um, this was uh, Ramzusha of Annapol, who was there at Shabbos. And uh, he takes one look at these two brothers, uh, Rabbi Pinchas and Rabbi Shmelka. Without saying any word of introduction, he looks down and he says, uh, the prophet uh, Malachi, the prophet Malachi says, from the, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the teaching from his mouth, for he is an angel of the Lord of hosts. Our sages uh, explain that uh, if the rabbi, if, if your rabbi resembles uh, an angel, you shall seek the teachings from his lips. So have any of us see, seen an angel? How, how would that be? But if we were to see an angel, would we cross-examine him? Would we ask for a sign? Would we put him to the test? Would he, we have all these expectations from him? No. We would believe 
and we would have faith because we knew we would know that he's an angel. It's the same thing with the true tzaddik, Ramzushu continued. Again, he's looking at the floor. He'd never seen these guys before in, the, in his life. It's the same thing with the true tzaddik. If there is someone who makes you feel like this, like you're in the presence of an angel, from his lips you shall seek the teachings. End of talking for Abzusha. The two brothers, Shmuel uh, and Pinchas, after Abzusha spoke to them, decided to stay uh, a little longer, and eventually became uh, disciples of the Mahdi the Message. It's not necessarily always what a person says; it's what a person does. It's um, there's a difference between uh, talking the Torah and living the Torah. Uh, a story is told of, um, of Rabbi Lieb. He was uh, one of the Lamed Vavniks, the, the 36 hidden uh, righteous people, the hidden tzaddikim who wanders around the, uh, the earth, uh, redeeming the souls of people. And he said, uh, he was quoted as saying, I didn't go to them, uh, the Mayan of Mezrich, to um, hear Torah from him. I went to uh, see how he ties his shoes, how he unties them. That's what I went to see. You learn not just by what people say, but how they lived. The two brothers were were dying to hear all these this great rhetoric. What did they see? A loving husband, uh, a devoted father, a kind heart. Um, in their eagerness to, to learn uh, from his mouth, they, uh, they neglected to, uh, to see his actions. And it was this that the, the, the holy Reb Zusha of Anapol pointed out to them. Uh, sometimes when you're in the presence of a great person, uh, you expect uh, something, but you're shown something else. Let's always be uh, aware of that. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Uh, please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Immuno Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.